everyone is going absolutely crazy right now because the markets all over the world are crashing. Japan, Europe, United States. Things are getting crazy. People are freaking out. My name is Caleb Hammer. This is your week in money. This is what everyone is freaking out about right now. At this point of recording this video, a 2.26% drop in the SPY. Looking at the last five days down 4.67%, but, 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 and we always need to remember this looking a little more long term year to date we're still up 10.22 percent at the time of filming this episode and one year previous to now we are up 15.58 percent this is a big drop don't get me wrong a lot of people are absolutely freaking out on twitter right now just in over 1.93 trillion dollars wiped from the u.s stock market so far today just to put things into perspective the dow today has dropped to about 38,800 this morning during the 2020 stock market crash caused by trump uh oh they're getting political the dow was trading around 20,000. the trump 2020 crash remains the worst stock market crash in history this is what happens you get to twitter and immediately it's just Politics, politics, it can't be just a natural pullback. It can't be that everything's just going to the moon. And that's, not, I'm not even saying I am pro or anti any politician, but people just go politics immediately. Speaking of politics, the stock market is officially Joe over because obviously Joe Biden's the president right now. People are going to blame the current sitting president. Stock market crash, brink of World War Three, inflation. Is it like less than 3% right now. Record high grocery prices, crypto crash, and we're about to talk about the crypto crash, but no mean tweets, am I right? Yeah, the doom and gloom, it's the easiest way to get engagement online. I get it. Looking at a day that's down like 3%, it's easy to put out that doom and gloom on days like today. The people that told you that Donald Trump would create a stock market crash and start World War III are the same people that are crashing the stock market and causing World War III. I sure could use some mean tweets world peace and cheap groceries right about now Twitter is so predictable we immediately just get so political i just wanted to talk about stock market stuff today stock market is up nearly 13 percent so far this year and people are acting like it's down 20 percent short-term thinking is a mental disease wouldn't go as far as he went there at the end but it is interesting because we always talk about these major drops the moment it's happening on a day-to-day -day basis but we're really bad at looking at the year over year patterns so again let's go back to the spy I mean, just looking at those last five years up 78.58 percent if you go to the overall max i mean that's just look at this trend overall you're gonna have pull packs look how micro this is in comparison when we we're down down during the years of 2020 the end of 2021 and pretty much all 2022 just look at that compared to where we are today is it the start of something like that again maybe maybe that's the natural cycle but we don't know just because we're down a couple percents for the day then you had the covid drop right there you had your 2008 drop there you had your tech bubble burst right there not everything is the end of the world but let's jump into what actually happened. One of the big things that people were absolutely freaking out about last night online, and that kind of prepared us for a doom and gloom open today, is that the Japanese stock market experienced the worst day since the 1987 market crash, with the Nikkei in Japan falling over 12%. News that will certainly have the investment world here nervous this morning. Japan's stock market is taking a hard fall right now. Stocks are selling off globally, with Japanese stocks having their worst day since 1987. The Japanese market has had its biggest one day slump in yen terms ever. And then, of course, today, the United States stock market kind of opened following a similar pattern. The Nasdaq dropped. 4% by market open and the S&P 500 fell more than 3% and we know it's kind of gone up a little since then but we're still down substantially for the day and there's also the Dow Jones Industrial Average which always kind of sucks but lost around a thousand points at the market open now a lot of investors start looking for safety especially with uncertainties about unemployment going higher than expected and rate cuts taking maybe a little longer than should be happening people have moved to some treasuries but last Friday there 
there was a decline in treasury yields, the 10-year treasury yield dropping from 3.795% on Friday to around 3.753%. And we're kind of seeing declines across the board right now when it comes to oils and precious metals and agricultural futures as they saw major declines as well. And Bitcoin overnight experienced a significant drop, losing over 15% of its value. Now, while a lot of the world is considering rate cuts and many Western nations have already done that, except for the United States, the sell-off in Tokyo followed the Bank of Japan's decision to actually raise interest rates, which strengthened the yen and caused the unwinding of the carry trade. We'll talk about carry trade in a second, but essentially investors have been funding riskier asset purchases with yen due to Japan's historically low interest rates, but the yen's appreciation forced margin calls and increased demand for the currency. Back to what we saw yesterday, some of the big hitters were the Magnificent Seven, which are technology stocks including NVIDIA, Tesla, Apple, and they each fell by more than 3%. And there's also been lots of conversations online about Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway's position, and they've reduced the positions in Apple, selling nearly half of its holdings. There's been lots of concerns that are rising about technology companies potentially overspending on artificial intelligence infrastructure and slowing economic growth for the country. Now, let's talk about the VIX. The CBOE Volatility Index, or VIX, is a key measure of expected volatility in the stock market and this surged to its highest level in over four years yesterday. It even briefly reached above 65 on Monday morning, which is a sharp increase from about 23 on Friday and roughly 17 a week ago. By shortly after 10 a.m. Eastern time, the VIX had cooled to around 42. So let's put this into historical standards. We talked about the COVID drop just a few minutes ago in the S&P 500 and the last time the VIX reached similar levels was in March 2020, shortly after the Federal Reserve's emergency actions during the COVID-19 pandemic. The peak in March 2020 was 85.47. Now, the VIX is often called Wall Street's fear gauge, and it's calculated based on market pricing for options on the S&P 500 and measures expected volatility over the next 30 days. Since that previous peak in the COVID-19 sell-off, the VIX has generally remained pretty subdued, frequently trading below 20. Now, in general, spikes in the VIX are often associated with significant market sell-offs, but can also be followed by quick recoveries. So when people are saying this is the end of the world, the market is going to zero, we obviously do not know that for a fact. Look at the S&P 500 during that COVID drop. It was a V-shaped recovery. We bounced back quick and then we went to the moon from there. Let's talk about the Japanese market and those carry trades. Carry trades involve borrowing low interest rate currencies like the Japanese yen and investing in higher yielding assets. And in recent years, this strategy has been incredibly popular. Now on Monday, traditionally safe haven assets such as the yen and the Swiss franc surged, which indicated that investors were rapidly unloading carry trades to cover losses elsewhere. Some economists have noted that recent weaker than expected US economic data, including the labor market report and manufacturing data, caused a significant reaction in the typical thin August market. So what we saw in the primary foreign exchange market was essentially position reduction, with investors unwinding long positions against the yen for currencies like the Australian dollar, British pound, Norwegian krone, and the US dollar. The Japanese yen recently traded at 143.57 per dollar, which is a sharp rise from 161.96 per dollar before the United States July 4th holiday, and and that's its highest since December 1986. So overall, many economists are saying that while there may be monetary panic about the yen carry trade, it is not dead. They acknowledged the significant interest rate differential still present, but noted that investors are looking to cover existing positions potentially involving the yen carry trade. Now, let's go back to the United States economy and talk about this Goldman Sachs report. It's pretty scary looking at this Bloomberg article, especially in the doom and gloom environment that we've been in these last couple weeks. But Golden Economist lift limited U.S. recession risk to 25%. Goldman Sachs Group Inc. economists increased the probability of a U.S. recession in the next year to 25% from 15%, but said there are several reasons not to fear a slump even after unemployment jumped. And of course, last episode, we talked about how unemployment jumped more than expected. We continue to see recession risk as 
Finance Limited, the Goldman Economist, led by Jan, wow, people have hard last names, said in a report to clients on Sunday. The economy continues to look fine overall, and there are no major financial imbalances, and the Federal Reserve has a lot of room to cut interest rates and can do so quickly if needed, they say. And that brings us to a lot of criticism that the Federal Reserve is currently facing. Unemployment, it went up to 4.3% last month, which is higher than the expected 4.1%. The Federal Reserve has been very, very cautious to cut rates, especially when compared to other Western nations. All of our neighbors, all of our allies, pretty much everyone has cut rates in the Western world. Not Jerome Powell, not the Federal Reserve here in the United States. They're being very cautious as inflation has not hit their 2% target just yet. Well, unemployment hasn't absolutely skyrocketed, but now with a major pullback in the stock market, higher unemployment than expected, is a bigger rate cut happening this year than we expected. And that's, again, where the criticism is. They haven't cut anything and they're not meeting this entire month. So if something dramatic does happen over these next couple weeks, an emergency meeting could be called to discuss a rate cut. If the drop we saw yesterday in the stock market ends up being more significant and we see us headed into further correction territory, maybe we're looking at multiple quarter point rate cuts this year. Is the Federal Reserve taking too long? Should they be cutting rates quicker? Should they even be cutting rates at all? Or is inflation still a bit too scary should they maintain rates or you know even crazier should they increase rates who knows economics is always just an interesting hypothesis that we're always trying to figure out so i want to hear your opinions in the comments below but in terms of what i'm doing when the market is taking pullbacks like this my investing strategy is exactly the same it's gonna be boring it's what pretty much any other finance youtuber would say out there because it's basic as f I'm just dollar cost averaging, buying in anytime I get money, throwing my money into low cost index funds, riding the wave of the market. The way I look at it is all up years, all down years, combine them together. The S&P 500 averages eight, to 12%, giving us about 10% a year on average. And obviously year over year so far, even with this big drop, we're well above that. I'm betting that we will still be the world leader this next century, and I put my money in that economy. And I can weather drops like this all day, any day, because I know I'm just buying at whatever is considered the future low at some point. So it's boring. It's simple, but it is the path to wealth for the majority of Americans.